Hello everyone, hi it's 0386SX and I know you can't tell at the very moment but I will bring it into the frame here so we can tell what we got going on here. We have the Prolinea 425S out again for what I hope is the final leg of this restoration video. Today I got the CD-ROM drives back from the seller and they were shipped better than this. They were very well packaged in bubble wrap. I just took it apart just to uh, see what we had, because I forgot that this was coming. But here is the uh, Toshiba replacement. We'll take that sticker off while we got it out in my hand, and that sticker's been there a while, but that's okay. So there's the SCSI drive. Looks like it's a couple years older than what they originally shipped me, or I'm remembering that wrong. But also, to great surprise, I got one of these guys. I had it came with the DVD writer, which it's an IDE one, but that was a very nice surprise. And if it does indeed work, even if the SCSI replacement doesn't work, if either one of these two work, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be satisfied because I didn't have to pay a lot for the original SCSI drive, and I know these can go for three digits, easy. So first thing is first, we are going to put our rails in. We're gonna try and put the rails in. are now on. Now I'm going to open this bugger, which is uh, not as easy without something in the drive bay there, because again, that was always a solid object that you could just push on, and but we got it off. Now our next thing we're going to do, we're going to very gingerly move this floppy cable out of the way. I think that's on its way out too, but hopefully I'm imagining it. So I'll slide this guy in. Well, fault start folks. I left the screws on on that case itself, so I gotta find the proper bit for that and get those off. Close enough. And an otherwise so far flawless video. That's in. Now that I said so far flawless, we're gonna have a flaw soon. So I just jinxed myself. That one's my own fault. Alright, we're in. Scuzzy cable is next. Well, power cable first, then SCSI cable. And if you watched the previous uh, video, I am not going to put the audio cable on. That was originally designed for the NAC 2X drive that won't even open. At this point, it doesn't even power on anymore. Now, if anybody has a way to fix that drive, I'd love to hear about it. It's, it was quite a pillar in the IT world.
now if it matters which end goes on where. But we got a very tight squeeze, so maybe I shouldn't have left those rails. Tighten those down just yet, so yep, there's your first flaw. Alright, that is in, so we'll connect that to the sound card next. Like so, and I think this was the end that was originally on, so that, if that is the case, then we are doing something correctly. Tuck that cable in. These computers were so powerless in the day that airflow wasn't a big deal. If there's a clear case, this would be the worst cable management in the world. Now, well, it is still pretty lousy cable management, but nobody's going to see the inside of the case, so I don't care. And I do apologize, my camera wasn't in focus. I hope it wasn't like that for long. And if I put the cover back on, you know for sure something is going to go wrong, so we're not going to do that yet. But now... I go over to my NEC monitor, the one piece of NEC technology that still does work in this house. There might be others, but the monitor is the only thing I know of off the top of my head. I need a keyboard and a mouse. Now, mouse ain't really required, but it would be helpful. If I have one nearby, wherever my old compact mouse went off to. Well, after a little bit of digging, I did find the compact mouse. Everything kind of got uprooted from the LTE Lite special video that I uploaded the other day, so... Still trying to adjust to that. And now... We should be ready to turn this computer on. And let's hope for no 1782s or 601s or any of the horrible mis nonsense that has come with the first three parts of this restoration. So far, so good. The disc I'm going to use is an original Windows 95 disc. I know some of these older CD drives, they don't like burned CDs. They only take factory discs. So we're going to eliminate that piece right now. Okay, so far so good. Make sure it doesn't hit my clamp, so I'm going to move that directly to the right. I'm going to eject and see what it does. It's a little bit quieter than the last one we had, so maybe, just maybe. So we trust our life to a Toshiba product. Look at that! We have a CD-ROM drive! So at least one out of the three drives work. And I don't have a ton of hard drive space, but I think we can try to do a copy and see what it take, where it takes us. There, use the right terminology. And there's another flaw in our video. <laughs> And I'll take this off the tripod, and you can barely see this thing is working good. 
we have a Toshiba product that actually does work in this house. So that's kind of amazing in itself because my luck with Toshiba products is just generally bad. And it's actually copying it pretty fast, so I'm very, very, very happy so far with this purchase. And even if it took a little bit of a working through, the first one being DOA, eh, stuff happens. I'm not worried about it. Selling was cool. I'm cool. Remember, customer service is about what the company seller does when something goes wrong. Lenovo used to be a really good company for fixing stuff that went wrong. But this copied like a charm. I'm gonna delete this because hard drive space is precious on this guy. Ooh, fun stuff. I wonder what's in there. That's a good test. I have no sound with this, so I really can't do much with it, but... I thought these used to come with games like demo games, but I could be wrong. And I am not going to, uh, or is it? Yeah, I'm not gonna go too hard in looking in that right now. Next thing I wanna do is try a homemade disc. It is another Windows 95 disc. This was made the disc itself, I believe, was burned on my Pro Book. So it's a fairly new burned product. So we'll see how this goes. So far, so good. And we don't have to sit and copy everything. We will copy, depending on how big this file is. Oh, I don't feel good about putting an AOL product on here anymore than I already had. We'll take these five cabinet files at random and see if they copy. We don't have to worry about burning, because this is not a CD burner. And it is flawless. So very, very good. Job well done. eBayer from, I believe, Arkansas. I apologize, I don't remember your name. But if I think of it or if I can look it up in a timely manner. But I guess I can look that up right now since I'm standing right next to my modern computer. Well, this uh, the seller ID is K N or K A N D J Page, so Candy Page, spelled with a K. So, if you watch this video, I doubt you ever will, unless I point it out. You're a really good eBayer, and I will gladly do business with you again in the future. You certainly didn't have to do what you did, and I even technically think there was a no returns policy on it, but again, you did real good. And I love to buy from you again. So now that we got the CD-ROM part resolved, 
and the disc is out, the next thing I want to do is do the simple thing and put this IDE cable in. Because the other one that was in there was throwing, every once in a while, this computer would throw a 1782 error. And that was preventing the computer from booting. Should this cable work, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. This will help us a little bit in the mess we call cable management in this tower. All right, get that out of the way. If you're one of those collector types, it probably does drive down the value of the computer using this cable. I don't care about that all that much. I care more about functionality. And if the cable that's in there now doesn't work all the time, it's not functional and therefore useless to me. I almost want to pull that modem out, but I don't have anything to put in its place, so it is going to stay for now. Oh man, I, hopefully I didn't bend those pins, but I have a bad feeling I did. And this cable is not much more than a, looks like it's just a few inches long. This cable that I bought from a seller on eBay, I think it's a 10 inch cable. There is a potential complication. It does say ATA 100 slash 133 system board. That was only in our dreams back in the early 90s. And we gotta do a little bit of a guessing game as the pins are not punched out on one side, but that should be pretty easy to resolve quickly as you compare notes. Or if we can find pin one, I still, the life of me, don't know where pin one is on this thing. That's helpful. So, okay, we got it figured out. So this, the groove side goes towards me or the front of the computer. Right now it's a computer's in front of me, so that could technically be correct. As they say in Futurama, that is the best kind of correct. There's that hard drive right there. So, I hope this isn't going to be too much of a makeshift thing we got going on here. And unfortunately, we got to wait for the RAM count to do its. No Air 1782. It's booting in the Windows 95, so I think this cable will pass the test. And for those that watched the first three videos, I don't get the fancy logo that most every other Windows 95 enabled computer had. I don't know why. I'm not that concerned about it. But it's booting, so that's good enough for me. Now 
now the challenge is getting all this to go into the case again. Uh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work all that well, but we're going to give it the old college try. It's the way this is landing in this case is not up to my standards, but if it wants to do that happy stick up thing, but And it may just do that. There may be nothing I can do to prevent that situation from occurring. And... It doesn't stick up too bad now, so we'll tighten this down. There's going to be several power ups and downs in this one just because I want to be thorough. I wonder if this company makes floppy the ribbon cables for the floppy drives. I'd that seems to be a huge problem with this case is the ridiculous bulkness of that too but and there is a piece missing in that one but the drive still the three and a half inch floppy drive does work so I am counting my blessings and knocking on wood even if it's crappy plywood it's the wood right Get drive does not stay on permanently, so that's we're off to a good start. That is one symptom. If the light on the three and a half inch floppy stays on permanently, then you might as well stop because you're going to get an error. So far, so good. Computer is booting. Well, we are online. We have a random diskette. It looks like it's a compact branded Windows 3.1 diskette. Let's see if that reads.
And, yep, that's good. Close that out. That was the CD drive. I put the burned copy of Windows 95 in here. No sweat. And we'll test the sound card since we have a little portable speaker. Thank you to my wife for that. It was a Christmas gift or a birthday gift a few years ago. And I'm not playing any sound, but maybe that doesn't at Windows 95. It's been so long I don't remember if it does or not. Or we have a bigger problem. Where's our... Oh, there's a start Windows. Nope. That we may not be plugged into the right spot on the motherboard either, so that's a possibility. Sounds working. Perfect. The modem I don't really care about. It's a 2400 baud modem. I mean, that's even bad by dial-up standards, so... I don't really care at this point. If I really got a reason to transfer files between this machine and... Other machines, I will put on put in an actual network card since I do have the slots for it. Well, what in the world? I don't know what that's about. Eh, okay, I don't know why it's ejecting all of a sudden, but. doesn't come back out and really I don't think I'm going to use it all that often anyway so I'm going to leave it at that so that was weird whatever let's shut this case back up and after that once I put the cover back on there will be one more sequence of startup and shutdown as I want to test that And this cover is a little bit bent. But once we get the cover fully on and installed, that won't matter. There we go. Just so we can see the goodness. Do I'm gonna dare pop this thing out again? Looks fine. Well, hopefully that's just a fluke with that popping back out like that. reading to drive as you can see the orange light as 
you want to know a obscure fact about my personal life is that I've if you heard from the first video of this series I've had Prolinea 433S machines in the writing lab I had in high school this is the of all the Prolinea 4 based machines that I've worked on or used this is the very first one I had something in that in that drive bay so that's a useless fact for your day but everything looks like we're coming up good so I am going to shut this down and with the magic of video editing we will get onto our final leg of this restoration project that I'm gonna record anyway okay folks we are back and this is the final leg of my tour is cosmetic and you will I'm going to try to see if I can zoom this out or raise this tripod. If you look at the underside of this case, particularly right here, and some sp spots right there, you'll notice that this case has some rust on it. And I'd like to get rid of that if I could. I saw on another channel somebody restoring their IBM, I think it's like a 286. They use this stuff to get rid of their rust problem. The only challenge is, this is unpainted metal. His was painted metal. But, we got nothing to lose. And the directions say to let this...
I did leave it on for closer to 10 minutes on this on this round and we got lots of red. We're in the red. I've never been so happy to be in the red. Oh yeah, there's still quite a bit left, but at least we know that this method is actually doing some good. There's significantly less of this corrosion on this bottom half than what were what was there about 15 20 minutes ago so that is that was the end game here it's probably not going to be perfect but this thing is almost as old as i am so let me think about that for a sec i was six years old when this computer came out so yeah that's about right down a little bit with some water and I do see there's a little bit of a side effect now with this and I will show you shortly is that it actually did some good on the case itself so I may have to apply the same goop to the side of the case here because we got lines on it now so I will do that quick I doubt this is the right way to use this stuff, but it actually did strip it down it's quite well, so. there, As you can tell, there's quite a bit left on the side of the machine. That will give that, I'm trying to make it fairly thick, but not so thick that it just runs off the side like it did on me a few minutes ago. I don't know if I'm succeeding. And what I might end up doing with this stuff, this is a lot to, for this restoration kit or fallout kit if you will to restore is I may have to take like some kind of sanding wheel and just grind that down and then seal it but in the meantime we're going to do the easier of the two cleanings we're going to spray down and get rid of the dirt that has cursed this machine Little bit of dirt, not too bad. At some point I may just take the, all of this stuff and the... Oh yeah, another lesson is to, I recommend putting down some kind of drop cloth if you do decide to do this.
we have a bonus round. If you recall earlier from the video, this CD drive was packaged with the replacement, or DVD writer rather. It's a HP LightScribe 740. And I have my modern computer out, or semi-modern. It's an Elite, Elite Book 2760p. Very versatile machine. Worst video editing machine in the world. But now we're going to see if the CD drive actually works that he sent, or he or she sent. So if we got power. It does eject. And we'll go. I guess I can zoom out here. I know I got that stupid glare from my light. And one piece of old school advice that's not really relevant today, but oh, we got a CD. So let's see if we can copy the contents of this drive. Fortunately, this is a much larger drive than the 500 megabytes, but pretty much everything's larger than that by today's standards. Uh, so let's copy and paste. All right, back to my original point. Uh, one piece of old advice with writers versus readers. If you need critical reading time, on a disc, you'd get either a DVD-ROM or a CD-ROM. The writers have to think a little bit. They have to see if it's a a blank disc or what kind of disc. And they, they have to go through a few more checks where a reader will just read. And it doesn't care what you put in there. Outside of some of those cheapies that... Well, they're cheapies that only read the factory discs or... They got in bed with the music industry. I'm not sure which one, but. We're also bound by USB 2.0 speed, so I'm not sure. If the drive itself is dead or if it's just USB 2.0 being slower. But she's reading. And this external was one I bought in high school or right out of high school. It was a Walmart clearance. It's one of the very few that i seen to this day that allows you to put in five and a quarter IDE drives such as this CD or DVD writer. I think I've only seen three external kits that allow you to do such a thing. I think I bought it for 20 bucks. Might have been $20 too much, depending on who you ask. It almost went to, little did I know at the time, was going to be my wife. So, you really want to circle around time. And there we go. We have a DVD writer that at least reads CDs. I don't have any blank discs handy, so I'm not going to go any further into this, but... But I am happy to get two out of three working disc drives out of this whole deal with the SCSI drive from the Prolinea 425S. So, that's good enough for me. I thank you for watching. We will see you next time.